Hi everyone, my name is Rose and welcome to today's sew along. So we are actually making our Cecilia tank today. So this is the complete finished pattern here. We have a bodice that is fully lined, so it has lining and it's floating, so that's really nice. Um, you have them tacked at the side seam, so it doesn't shift too much when you're wearing it. A couple little call out features for this pattern is we have a bust start at the side seam and we have a nice little curved open v-neck point on the front bodice our bows are non-functional so this can be removed if you prefer to have the tank without them and then on our back the v-neck is a little bit more straight and it is a bit lower than the center front so your bra strap will be here so it is completely covered and this is just some general call outs and features the total length of the bodice is uh or the total length of the tank is right about at your hip so it would fit really nicely if you wanted to tuck this into a mid or even like the high rise jeans um it looks really nice i had a photo shoot with this and some high rise pants and it looked very nice um what i'm wearing right now is also a version of our cecilia except i made a little hack so in order to do something like this is we're following all of the additional steps for this except we measure to our waist so i wanted my tear to begin at my waist and i removed that and i doubled the bottom hem so we would have some more additional fullness here so that's just one additional hack that you can do for this tank and we're going to begin our sew along so we're going to begin our first step will always be is to wash and treat your fabric as you would normally do if your top was dirty so i've already done that i've pressed this ironed out all of the creases and i have already cut out my fabric so the next step will be to mark your darts After you mark the darts on your self fabric, you're going to also mark the darts on your lining fabric. So after our darts are marked, we are going to move on to sewing the darts. So close the darts and I'm going to show you a little technique on how to make sure that you don't have super pointy darts on the side. So follow along with me. It's pretty much a very similar process, except for at the point, there's like three stitches right before the point, and you're gonna use that to curve. So you're not gonna create like a straight line, but you're gonna go all the way from the side seam right about there, and then you're kind of gonna give like a little curve so that when you're pressing it, it'll be nice and smooth and not pointed at all. This is a really fantastic little tip, and I will share with you right now. The dart is basically started the same way. You're gonna start all the way at the edge, back stitch and then come all the way to the front of the dart so there's just going to be a little curve this happens about an inch from the bust point and it's about three or four stitches so instead of going directly into the folds of the fabric you're going to use those last three or four stitches to create a nice curve so this will sit nice and even on your bust and you're going to clip the thread and tie it off so when you're pressing the points of the darts, you do want to kind of lift it up and then push the seam allowance down and then just kind of slightly pull as you press the iron all the way up into the point. So this helps to create a nice soft curve and it won't be pointy on your bust start. So the next step we have here is going to be stabilizing the neckline and the armhole. So we're going to start from the shoulder, go all the way into the point, stop, and then repeat on the other side. And we're also gonna add the stay stitching here to the armhole. And what the stay stitching does is it helps to reinforce these points and help to not overstretch when we are sewing these. So the stay stitching, um, you can keep at like a three, the stitch length, or slightly smaller, and you're going to just about one eighth inch from the edge, you're going to sew. This is a, a stitch that is going to remain in the garment the entire time. So this also helps to extend the wear of your piece. 
Let's move on to stay stitching. With our right sides together, we are now attaching our shoulders. So this is going to be for the both the lining and the self fabric. So I'm pinning here the shoulders together and you're just gonna sew at the seam allowance directly across. Our next step here is to sew all along, along the neckline. So with right sides together, you're gonna pin all the way from the center front, off to the shoulder, all the way to the back and around again. After we pin, we're gonna bring this off to the sewing machine and sew all the way around. Sew carefully all the way to the center front. I mark mine with this green pin. I'm gonna make sure that the needle is still inserted as I pivot to give you that really sharp uh, point at the center front and center back. And then I'm just working all the way back into the back body. I make sure I'm pressing all the seam allowances open as I'm sewing past them and just removing the pins as I need to. My next step is to go in and reduce the seam allowance and add our little clips just so that all the soft edges or the curves remain nice and well, less bulky when you're flipping the garment. So I'm creating these little triangles by like flo uh, folding the fabric and then clipping down towards that seam allowance. We are then going to flip so that right sides are out, give this a nice hard press, and we're gonna add a uh, understitch to the neckline. So on my sewing machine, I have my seam allowance pressed towards the lining side so that when I'm adding this understitch, it's catching the seam allowance. I'm guiding this along really gently and sewing very close to the edge on the lining side. I'm gonna go all the way around the neckline so that this is a nice little finishing detail. So our next step is finishing the armholes. So we're gonna start on one side by folding both lining and self fabric off to the other side. And then we're going to take the lining and self from that unrolled side and match them together. So you can see me pulling the lining so that it's visible and kind of just encasing that whole other shoulder. So I'm gonna add pins from the shoulder all the way down to the underarm. And then you're gonna take this off to the sewing machine and sew at your seam allowance. With your pins in place, be sure to not catch any of the other shoulder in your sewing. And I'm going, like I said, from underarm to the shoulder all the way to the other, other underarm. And then you're gonna take this off to the sewing machine just give you a little better angle here so you can see a better view of this. And you're sewing from underarm to underarm. Go along and then add your little trimming to the armhole and the fun part is up next. So moving on to the best part, you're going to pull through the previous portion. So the one that was kind of like rolled into that armhole. So you're pulling that through it should be nice and easy since you've clipped and trimmed your armhole sleep, uh, seam allowance. And they can see here you now have a nice clean, ar clean armhole. So you can take this off to your iron, give this a nice little hard press, and we're going to repeat the exact same thing on the other side. If you can believe it or not, we are almost done here. So our next step here is to joining 
the side seams. So you're going to open up your shirt and then for the same armhole, so kind of just follow so you're not pinning this incorrectly, um, you're going to take the lining of the front and pin it to the lining of the back. Make sure you're meeting at that armhole seam so that everything kind of aligns. And I just added one additional pin just to keep that dart pointing down so it doesn't do anything funky when I'm sewing. And then I'm making sure it's meeting at the center, everything is aligning, and I'm pinning from hem to hem. So the next step here is to bring this off to your sewing machine and then sew at your seam allowance. So after that, you can take it off to the iron, press the seam open, you can trim it down, and then we're repeating the same step on the other side. So, we finished the side seam, the neckline, the armhole. Our next step is to really try on the garment, make sure it fits properly. So I'm at that stage. At this point, you can see if the length is good for you or if you would like to make it shorter. So for this, I'm going to keep the length as is. So the next step will be finishing both hems. Um, yeah, so let's get to that. That's just going to be an easy hem. So rolling the bottom under and then creating a one inch hem after. To start with the bows, if this is what you're adding to your project, we're gonna start with the bow center. So uh, take them apart and you're gonna take the right sides together and then sew all the way down. So the next thing you're going to wanna do is Press your seam open on the iron, and then you're also going to cut down the seam allowance slightly, and then we're going to move on to the next step, which is flipping it inside out. Okay, so you're pressing the seam open. This is just going to help lay flat when you're flipping it inside out as well. So I'm just trimming it down to about an eighth of an inch. The right sides of your fabric are obviously together so just want to make sure you're paying attention to the saturation of your fabric and now you have them like so you're going to next step is to grab a safety pin so we can flip this inside out and then give it a nice press yes and if you can see here my seam is directly at the center back of my strap and you're going to repeat this process for all three parts of the strap. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the longest bow tie. So this is the bow tail and we're going to turn the raw edges inside. And you can either take this off to your sewing machine and add a top stitch or you can make an invisible stitch all along the top portion. So we're going to take our blouse. This is our front, right? So you just want to make sure you're going to take the wrong side, place it on the right side. So you can find the half, the half length of your bow tie. And then just give it a little tack, tack it in place and just repeating with the other side. So folding in half, wrong side to right side, and tacking that in place. Nice. The next piece you're grabbing is the bow loop. So you're gonna take the right, uh, right side together, finding the middle part, and then you're gonna start at the center and kind of work your way around. You can either bring this off to the sewing machine or sew this one by hand. Okay, and since my fabric is really thin, I'm going to create a stitch here with the right sides of our bow together. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is press the seam open. Maybe I'm just going to finger press this. So just create a nice little opening here, like so. And you can trim down the seam allowance here. There we go. 
after this what we're going to do is flip it so that the raw edges are in and that the raw edge is at the center of the bow so the next step here is we're going to take that bow and lay it at that shoulder seam so i'm adding this pin back and you can add a little tack here with your sewing machine or by hand this is just to keep this these two pieces in place and so it doesn't shift front and back on the shoulder so you're going to repeat the same process on the other shoulder. And the last stop is to add the bow center piece. So also has raw uh, seam allowance, raw edges. So you're going to flip it so you see the shoulder seam. And it's okay if you're a little bit off that tack on the shoulder. So you're just going to fold the seam allowances underneath. And you can pull it in just a little bit so it's made to be a little bit shorter so that you're folding the seam allowance in and you're getting a little bit of, if you can see here and here, it's going to give that little like squished uh, at the center of the bow. So I'm adding a tack for my pin and then you can just go in and hand stitch that. All right, so I added my tack. My needle is doubled. And I'm just going right underneath, I'm just creating a easy little whip stitch. I'm gonna remove the pin. And it's pretty much just going from right to left. It's at an angle, so you are coming forward. And you're just going all the way to the other side. Nice. So all your raw edges are now hidden. I'm going to add one final stitch. So I'm going to add like a little stitch to get to get the lining kind of to tack everything in place so that also our bow center doesn't move. So wiggling that front and back and then just one additional just for safety measures. Voila. You're going to cut that. Maybe a little shorter. And then we have it, your little bow. And you're gonna repeat the same process on the next side. To add a little bit more precision in my garment and just to kind of bring this project up one little extra notch, we're going to add a little bra stay. So this is just going to sit right here and you're going to use um, these little snaps. So you just want to get something quite small. This is, if you can tell, about 0.8 centimeters or about a quarter of an inch. And what you're going to do is you're going to take your thread Bring it out about 30 inches. Our next step here is to fold the yarn in half or the thread in half. So we're gonna have this little loop so you can give it a little twist and then thread this through the eye of your needle. This is why you want like a fairly large eye so that this is quite easy for you. And then what's gonna happen is you're gonna fold this again. So then you're gonna have four threads on this one needle. Clip the end of the thread and then you're going to add a tie at the end and then we're all ready to start. So our first step is to grab our male piece and we're going to start to sew this one in first. So we're going to put the needle in and we're starting about a quarter of an inch from that edge. So putting it underneath that piece there just to hide that additional and you're just going to begin to sew this in. So we're threading it through, letting it land on the fabric, and then you can sew. I added two stitches per little open notch, so this is extra secure. We're going to go all the way around, just angling your needle to the next little stitch, and then moving on to the next step. So coming into my last portion, you come in for two times and then I'm wrapping, gonna dig my needle in really close to that, um, the male part here. I'm going to wrap the thread around, oop, if I can, two times. Nice. And then I'm going to thread it through, keep it really close. So now we have a little knot that's next to that portion 
and you're going to put the needle underneath that male clasp and you're going to just give it a little pull so you're kind of guiding that knot underneath underneath the snap so you can give yourself a little clip and then we're moving on to the next step all right so starting right about a quarter of an inch from that edge we're just going to dig into the fabric just to create two knots to make this nice and secure make sure that loop doesn't twist there we go so i have two here and on the third one i'm going to go through and you're going to see that there's a loop here so if it becomes a little funky like this, just make sure you pull on it to make it nice and steady. And you're basically just going to loop through and securely pull it all the way down to the bottom. So you're self crocheting here and it may take a few little stitches just to get um, acquainted with this type of um, movement with your hands. But after a while, it just becomes quite seamless. You want to make sure you're pulling and the last stitch is going all the way down or your previous stitch is going all the way down to the last stitch. And you want it to be just about, well, I'm going to remove a few stitches so you can give it a little pull. I'm just going to take two out. Nice. And you're going to see there's a little loop. You're going to put your needle through the loop just to close off that crochet. So it's just meeting just the base about of the base of the um, right here. So of your snap. So you're going to take that female part, whoop, grab it securely in your hand and you're going to loop it through and you're going to bring your needle back into that first little eye of that chain stitch. So pull it all the way through and I'm just going to add one more. So thread it through bring it right to the top of that stitch. Nice. And then you're going to create a little tie off here. So just hooking that all the way through. And then just for safety measures, you're gonna just snake your needle down a few stitches just so you can hide the thread. So now that you have that off, you can snip your thread. And now I'm just gonna come over like this. Voila, this will hide your strap. And here is the final reveal. I hope you enjoyed watching this today. All of the pattern details will be in the show notes. Thank you so much. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed this content. Bye.